This is Carlton. From ITN News at 10 with Trevor McDonald. Hague and the Lords, six resign in protest. No compensation for Hillsborough Police. 11 Euro countries cut their interest rates. Family doctor Shipman charged with two new murders. And after 40 years, Sir Cliff and why he wants to slow down. Good evening. More eminent names went onto the casualty list of William Hague's battle with the Conservative peers today. His party's deputy leader in the Lords, Lord Fraser, resigned, saying he was dismayed and bewildered by the sacking of Viscount Cranbourne. Lord Bowness, Lord Pilkington and the Earl of Home also gave up their front bench posts. Two Tory pairs, Baroness Strange and then tonight Baroness Flather, resigned the Tory whip. Tonight the deal on Lord's reform, which Lord Cranbourne accepted and which Mr Haig so angrily rejected, still looks like going through. Our political editor Michael Brunson reports. William Haig moved quickly to try and establish an air of normality today. He formed a new front bench team in the House of Lords and called them into central office for a conference with the deputy leader and the party chairman. But tonight all is not normal in the upper house. There is something very close to open revolt among the Tory peers. Some of them decided on very public resignations. I was uh, Robert Cranbourne's uh, deputy in the opposition in the Lords. Uh, while I wasn't an active participant in the negotiations, uh, I certainly encouraged him to go for the sort of result that he eventually achieved. It seemed to me in such circumstances I had uh, no option but to resign. Next to go was Lord Pilkington, the Tories' education spokesman in the Lords. I wasn't part of the negotiations, uh, but I feel it need not be a sacking matter. And I feel since we're all going the same way, the situation could have been sorted out more easily earlier on. For two PRSs, Tories yesterday, Independents today, it was an emotional reaction to Lord Cranbourne's sacking. I was very, very deeply upset and shocked. Still am. And he's been doing, trying to do something all of this year. I don't, didn't feel really very happy about the way it was all uh, spread out and the way he's been, uh, I mean, the, the word sacked, not really very comfortable. During the day's proceedings in the Lords, the Labour leader there couldn't resist one sly dig at what was happening. Uh, we have tried on this side of the House to keep up with the changes and movements which have taken place on the opposition front bench in the last few hours. But she went on to pay generous tributes to those who had resigned. Lord Cranbourne's replacement as opposition leader admitted that it had been a traumatic time. We have taken some hard blows over the course of the last 24 hours. My Lords, when we have retired, uh, briefly to lick our wounds, we shall return hydro-like to be as effective and as thorough uh, in opposition as we always have been. Most Tory members in the Commons are firmly backing what William Hague did. Uh, he did act promptly and assertively, whereas if he'd delayed and chilly shally and tried to do the compromise that he later did with Strathclyde um, without dismissing Cranman, I think his authority would have been fatally impaired. On ITN's lunchtime news, Mr. Haig insisted that he'd had to take a stand on the principle of how the upper house should be reformed. But it is about Lords reform. Uh, the government are proposing to proceed with changes to the House of Lords without a clue where they're going in the long term. They're fiddling about with our constitution while jobs are being lost and factories are being closed. And we are right to reserve the right to oppose, to amend, to suggest improvements and changes to the legislation they will bring forward. But it now seems certain that although it was Lord Cranbourne who was sacked, it's his deal and not the one William Hague wanted, which will be voted through. Michael Brunson, News at 10, Westminster. And Michael Brunson joins us now from Westminster. Mike, picking up that last point in your report, how can it possibly be that the deal which is going to be accepted now is the deal which Lord Cranbourne negotiated, although he's the one who's gone? 
Well, it's the simple matter that most of the Tory peers in the House of Lords seem to be entirely happy with the Cranbourne deal. Let me just remind you what it was. That it was not to greatly obstruct the Lords Reform Bill when it comes up to the House of Lords, because the government was going to get that bill through anyway, ramming it through under the Parliament Act. And in return for that, the 91 hereditary peers would be allowed to stay for a bit and to sit and vote, and there would be this firm understanding, as Lord Cranbourne had it, that the interim house would only last for a very short time and that the whole thing could be sorted out almost certainly before the next election. Now, tonight, you see, the government are saying, all right, if that's the situation, fine. We regard the Cranbourne deal as still on, even though Lord Cranbourne has gone. Right, let's go with it. We'll bring in the bill early in the new year. We'll put it up through the Commons and then to the Lords. Let's see if we can get the deal through. We think we can. What's the assessment tonight of how damaging all this has been to William Hague? There's no question that down in the House of Commons he's got a lot of support. People are saying, look, we can't have a Tory toff up there in the House of Lords telling the leader of the party what to do. But the real test, you see, is going to come in the Lords because William Hague is still saying, no, I will not have this idea of the interim house. He said, I am certain if we go for the interim house, it'll just be a house full of 